Hi, I am sick and tired of idiotic know-it-all Muslims such as Hamza Andreas Tsortsis opening their huge trap and spouting nonsense and which their fanboys lap up indiscriminately. Instead of first switching on their eyes and then the brain, the knee-jerk reaction goes straight to opening their mouths and to insults and attacks of delusional grandeur which is painfully inappropriate. Instead of spending time looking for insulting terms which can't get him into legal trouble, Hamza Tsatsis should rather consult his PC and Google. Instead of saying, my research still stands and so on, he should cult, cult, well, I suppose he means cultural exchange. He should show me that he actually understands what he's trying to do. I remember very clearly that during the conversation with PC Myers where he was told the Quranic description is wrong, he was also told he is concentrating and focusing on the pixel and ignoring the picture. Now that was good, solid advice. Did our little zealot embrace it? No far from it. He again thinks that by showing the lack of sources which prove translations of Greek medicine and Arabic existed at the time of Muhammad, somehow magically validates his Quran. How so? He thinks that Muhammad dictated the entire book without researching the history and the development of the Quran. So in his brain, this means no Arabic translation equals no knowledge of Greek medicine, equals no possibility of Muhammad knowing Greek medicine, which then equals divine sourcing. Ergo, God did it. Well, if he did, he did it wrong. That is the point. All I was showing is that 300 years before Muhammad, the Greeks, Jews, Hindus, Egyptians, they'd all used the stage model, which is remarkably close to the description in the Quran. I showed several possibilities how this could have happened. If this detail is wrong, this does not automatically validate the Quranic description. Are you, Hamza, too thick to see this? Now, I presented a possible explanation that doctors who had studied in Gandishapur had brought with them this knowledge of Greek medicine. As it is a strange coincidence that the doctor who was referred to by Muhammad had been to Gandishapur. If this, the, uh, yeah, you know the story. I just showed how several words in the Greek descriptions matched those in the Quran. Several people have tried to show Hamza how the concept of embryology in Greek medicine could have found its way into the Quran. They were possibilities, not claims of the ultimate solution and fact. Nobody ever said that person X went to Y and learned Z and then talked to Muhammad. No, all we offered was a possible solution. The fact that the Quranic description of embryology is wrong remained and remains untouched. It is a fact. It is wrong. Your argumentation is irrelevant. The Quranic description matches that of an allegory in a religious book. Leave it there. Oh, and finally, I did stumble across an explanation how the knowledge of Greek medicine could have been known in the 7th century. It says here that the translation of Greek works into Arabic was mainly through Syriac versions and occurred during two distinct periods, one of which was the 6th century. You know, if a guy dies 536, that makes it the 6th century. Just, just saying. And then we find that there was a second drive 300 years later, which is where our Hamza stopped looking, instead of looking thoroughly. And the link is below the video. Why didn't Hamza simply follow the links I gave him a bit more carefully? Would that be too much strain on both his brain cells? Well, then, then you have the story of medicine by Victor Robinson, which describes very clearly and accurately with a huge amount of detail how Nestorians in the 6th century made Gandishapur into a medical center and how the Arabic translations were made available from Alexandria to Damascus and all the way to Persia. Oh, you don't accept the time frame of the 6th century and want to go back further? Well, your wish is my command. Here's a text from the Paleolithic hunter-gatherers and Mesolithic nomads from Arabia. Now, I know that researching on the net is not exactly your favorite pastime, so I'll give you a hint. 
Paleolithic is the Stone Age. But if you had really done some honest research, you would have found all these names with their approximate dates, which go back a lot further than Muhammad and the Quran. And all the others who contributed the medical knowledge of the Greeks in an area and region which matches that of the appearance of the Quran. Now, listen up. I'm not saying that every word was literally copied into the Quran, but that the knowledge was there and it is remarkably similar to what we find in the Quran today and what we know to be wrong. If you really want, we can keep this up for a long time or you can continue down the path I have already commended you for. Go into textual analysis and contribute to the understanding of the Quran. Just don't try and pull the Quran out of its niche. Don't bring your bobby car to a Formula One race. It is a dream and a delusion, not reality.